And tonight in our first story, we're going to go to the M80 New Wave Rock Festival. We're going to meet some of those bands considered by some to be at the vanguard of music of our decade, including Minneapolis's own Curtis A. in The Personal. Strangers here among us They're not quite the same There's a movement going on. Rock and roll is back. Some call it new. Some call it punk. Some call it spirited and others call it plain old rock and roll. Recently, the Walker Arts Center and the University of Minnesota staged the M80, the first rock festival ever for this music, which is simply called New Wave. Music buffs considered the effort as important as Woodstock and the Monterey Jazz Festival. The setting was the field house at the U, with a bare bones decor fitting the style of music. One huge portable stage in the cavernous dark cool room, a picket fence to separate audience from performers. There was a noticeable lack of glitter, no costumes, fire breathing, makeup or puffs of smoke. Many of the bands had that played down look, as though they rolled out of bed and showed up. The cast included bands from London and all over the U.S., with such names as The Records, The Contortions, Tuxedo Moon, The Suburbs, The Flesh Tones, The Fingerprints. And then there were teenagers, college students, and new wave enthusiasts and everyone everywhere seemed to be enjoying themselves. This is America's cultural vanguard. This is not, uh, oh, I don't know. This is not soap opera. This is not uh, paperback books at the supermarket. This is not um, uh, movies about sharks and airplanes. This is something uh, a little more deep. The man who coordinated the festival from the Walker's End is Tim Carr. The festival was in part his idea, and he has a grasp on the history and meaning of the new wave. What sort of the new wave has brought in, which would sort of arise, arose in 75 with certain bands, really took hold in 76 with uh, like the Sex Pistols and the Clash happening in England, the Ramones and Patti Smith in New York, the Suicide Commandos forming in Minneapolis at that time, um, bands all over. It was sort of a simultaneous explosion all over the bands felt this and it was all of a sudden an, an underground was formed like an explosion across the country bands formed who wanted to create and most important have the chance to play music that was not prescribed and controlled by the mammoth music industry you know, so it's like it's back to maybe that political spirit of like Bob, early Bob Dylan of snubbing the system. You know, like we're going to do it on our own. Not only are the bands trying to do it on their own, but the audience is encouraged to enjoy it in their own way. It's not required that they sit quietly in their seats and listen in a concert hall. They're free to move around and do the pogo, to laugh and dance to what some rockers call laugh and dance music. The return to actual participation, I mean, like the pogo, you know, is, as you know, people would make fun of it, but what it was, it was just as simple as the twist. You know, and it was just go out, jump around, have fun to this band. But if you're not into laughing and dancing, if you still prefer the Beatles, you may wonder who those people are up there and how they view themselves. One of the local performers was Curtis Almstead, known to his fans as Curtis A. He's one of those people who's been around for years in different bands, doing the music he liked, but never making big time, because his ideas were not part of the mainstream. When you hear, here, I don't hear. to my mind. What thought is that? C and G. Please welcome from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Curtis A. Special rock performer. 
He's a soul singer in the true sense of the word, and he's not a pretender. He's been compared to James Brown or Bruce Springsteen because of the way he uses his voice, howling and screaming. They've been screaming. They've been screaming for 25 years, man. I don't know. I just, that's what I like. I don't like to scream on every song, but I like Little Richard a lot. I, th I just I like the, in the intenseness of, I don't know, it makes me feel like a human saxophone or something. You know, it's just, I just vibrate when I do it. Kurt works at Comic City on Hennepin. Though it's a full-time job, he considers it more of a hobby. His current band rehearses in the basement. So I always think I go see bands and I go, oh, we're better than that. So it's just I, I want everyone to know it, kind of. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that hate us, you know, hate our band or hate the, the way we play. They hate uh, what they think we stand for. I like the idea of rebelling someone, yeah, I like that, so I guess that's what it is. There's always somebody out there trying to, trying to stick it to you, and I just, I don't want to be stuck. Sound reminiscent of the 60s? Those people who feel that the music of unrest and social change was 10 and 15 years ago are in for a surprise. What is really, I think, really important is that, uh, as somebody wrote in the New York Rocker, a punk magazine, that what New Wave is, is a lot of me's of the me generation screaming out for the other half, the, the you. And um, that is like, you know, it's sort of trying to reach for a connection, but trying to reach for it maybe as a different way than the sort of communal spirit of 10 years ago proved wrong. You gotta remember there's people in high school now, and um, the, those are the people that they want to reach. And the absorption into the system, it's, it's still the same old thing. festival Ex because it looked really the word crazy. For it. Well, experience is the word for it. I think that one thing I have to say is I think now at least I understand the roots of the music and what those musicians are trying to do with their music. Well, which you I do. Never, well, I got a feeling for it, and I also thought it was very interesting that the Walker and the University of Minnesota got behind the idea and went right. to the effort to give this music its thought place. Thought it was worth it, sure. Right. The only, the one thing that I, I didn't really like, and I don't mean it to be moralizing, but it seemed to me as though there were a lot of young people using drugs who were using drugs to enjoy the music. At least that's how it seemed to me. And that's possibly what's given that music uh, its bad name. And so, so, the, so it's sort of unfortunate.